Well, the Namaskit is a natural uh, highway between the Lakeville Ponds and the Taunton River. The term Namaskit is not the native name of the river. It is the native name of a particular place on the river, which is more or less where Route 105 crosses it today. And it means the fishing place. Well, my family moved back into Lakeville when we were about eight or nine. And that spring, a friend of ours told us about the, the herring run down on Vaughn Street. And so we rode our bikes from Anaconda Drive all the way down to uh, the Namaska River on, on Vaughn Street at the Vaughn Street Bridge. And we couldn't believe what we saw. The, the river 35, 40 years ago would boil as the, the herring would be swimming upstream. And for a pair of nine-year-old boys to see something like that was just absolutely magical. We weren't supposed to go in the water. We weren't supposed to get our feet wet. We ran straight into the water. We'd, we'd be scooping the herring up, trying to catch them and everything. And uh, I think we spent the whole day there that first day. And we went back as many days as we could. Every year when I see those herring come back up the river, I'm transported back to that. And uh, I absolutely love the idea that my children are seven and nine now, and I'm teaching them how to catch the herring. Some of my earliest memories of the Mamaskett River were, were fishing. And, and we fished off the Vaughn Street Bridge and, and uh, quite regularly. And my father built a, a nice little boat and uh, the Freitas family allowed us to keep it in a little pool that they had there. And I, I would go up there with friends and, and paddle upstream and had, had some good fishing times. And, also, we would go swimming, you know what I mean? Where the weather was a sandy bottom, we would, we would commonly go swimming. Even, even sometimes going up a little further and camping overnight and uh, had some grand experiences doing that. One of the issues that the Namaska River is have, having is the, the, um, the explosion of invasive weeds and encroaching on the, uh, the channel of the river. Uh, there's wild, wild rice, which is an invasive species that's here on the river. There's milfoil that comes from the pond complex. And there's a ton of bacteria and fertilizers, phosphates, that get into the river from the, um, from the invasive species of human growth along the banks of the river and they're septic and their, their farm runoff and fertilizers from those things. The Namaskit River actually is home to the largest herring run in southeastern Massachusetts. And when the heron are running and the water is low and the weeds are high, the heron have trouble getting back downstream. The baby fry are only very small. And we have a uh, Middleborough Lakeville Herring Fishing Commission, which has representatives from Lakeville and Middleborough who keep a very close eye on it and are always working hard to try to figure out how to solve that problem, how to get those weeds out of the river. Most of the rivers throughout the Northeast have runs of fish, but the Namaskit is a little bit unusual in that it is so far inland uh, that the fish have to come in order to get the spawning grounds. They swim 40 miles from Narragansett Bay up into Assawampsett Pond Complex. Um, I don't think if you dropped half the population of this area off in Narragansett Bay and asked them to walk back, if they could find their way. And yet these fish that are about this big swim upstream 40 miles each year to come back here and, and lay their eggs again. 
You know, they, the young don't come back to, the young alewives do not come back to, the, to this system until they're two or three years old. So without this river being in, in navigable <laughs> conditions for them, uh, and it, it's, it's a challenge, you know. It's my job to protect the drinking water. The cities of Taunton and New Bedford, um, this is their drinking water, and each of them have other towns they supply, so it's really a quarter of a million people that drink this water. The Aswamps and Pond Complex is the largest natural aquifer in the, in the state, and the Namaska River is, is really the only outlet for, the, for those waters. There's uh, hundreds of millions of gallons of water in those systems, and they all flow through the Namaska to get back out into the ocean. Well, the Namaska River is, is, is a surprising thing because it it, it's almost level all the way from the Assawamset Dam to Route 28, East Grove Street. From that up point on down, it pitches down, and most of the elevation change occurs between there and the electric light station on Wareham Street. It's almost so flat, so you don't see any sign like if you look at the water here, you see very little sign of movement, you know. When I was nine or 10, like I said, the river would boil as, as you could see him coming up. Now you don't see that too often. Uh, I do volunteer as a herring observer and we get to count at the Wareham Street Bridge. And it's, uh, some days it's very boring and some days it's extremely exciting when you get a push through and then you see that boil and that's reminiscent of the old days. Most of my experiences with Heron would be at Oliver Mill Park <laughs> because, and, and also Wareham Street, because when it was legal to take them, uh, we would go there and dip, dip them up with a net. And my son would, would strip them, milk them, so to speak, to find out whether it was a male or a female. The males went right back in the water and we kept the females to cut the row out of them. Uh, then, then use those carcasses as the Indians had taught the people to use as fertilizer. As far as we know, uh, people were already using the river for transportation as early as 10,000 years ago. Uh, maybe earlier, but we don't have evidence of that yet. Uh, but there is fairly solid evidence from that period of time, which we call Paleo-Indian, which was a time when there were fairly small bands of people moving over large areas in the course of an, their annual round of, of migrations, following the game and in, in the seasons. As the climate became more stabilized after the end of the last ice age. Uh, people adapted to the local area and became somewhat more settled down, so that more like a seasonal camp that people would be here for several, you know, a season or two of the year, every year, and keep coming back to it. Early occupations around eight or nine thousand years ago are uncommon in New England, but there's a concentration of them in the area of the Taunton River and its tributaries. There are important native population centers, one of them located on Assawampsit Pond, one of them located more or less where downtown Middleborough is today, and another one located up at Titicate which is on the Taunton River. And so this was a highway that allowed for canoe transportation between those places. Our site is located only about three quarters of a mile 
upstream of the place where the fish have to jump up the falls. And the advantage of having a camp there on the river is that the fish, by that time, they don't make it every time the first time. So by the time they get there, they're kind of tired and easier to catch. They come up the Taunton River from Narragansett Bay. And then they come up the Namasket River from the Taunton River. And then they find their way into the, the Lakeville Ponds, which is where they spawn. So every year, and this still happens today, every year in April and May, you get a run of alewives and shad. Certainly for native people, coming here at that time of year would have been an advantage. I wonder what the thoughts of the Native Americans were when they first paddled down this river. Because there are times you can go back to that, that same moment. Um, and that's one of the beauties of the river. One of the spots I bow hunt, I, I paddle my canoe in. And when I, if I'm successful and I put a, a deer in the bottom of my canoe and I'm paddling out with a, from a bow hunt, that's a time machine for me. Because I, that's how, how many times has that happened on this river? The moon will be out, the stars are coming out. I got a deer on the bottom of the canoe from a, with a, that I shot with the bow and arrow. It's, 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 it's just magical, at least for me it is. I've had a number of visits to the site by native people, and one of them suggested to me that there might have been two groups of people at this site. One of them would be the local residents, okay, who are there more or less year in, year out. The other group is a group of travelers. She referred to them as the twisted rope people, who visit occasionally bringing with them exotic items. And so that might be part of what's going on here because we do have some stone that certainly does not belong here and was not brought here by the glacier. The degree of impact that native people had on the river was probably very minimal. That is, I mean, there's a sort of a native ethic of respecting the land, of not destroying and taking more than you can use. Uh, but once Europeans began to colonize, they began to build bridges, to build dams, to build mills, and these have certainly had an impact upon the flow of the river. The first dam that was put on, on the river was at what we call Wareham Street now. I think it was called Water Street at the time, at any rate. And that dam, uh, it was right by the electric light plant. And so they started generating electricity there. And there were times when they were sending people up to the head of the river to work around the gatehouse dam to get more water. Other times, they were getting so much water, so much water coming through there that they could run the, uh, the operation on water power only. So in the, the 35, 40 odd years that I've been on the river, um, the river's changed dramatically. The herring populations have changed dramatically and the, the um, build out up on and around the river has uh, changed dramatically. It's, the river used to be a lot, uh, a lot cleaner, a lot wider. Uh, the, all the growth has kind of encroached on the channels. In the 1800s, um, the river was so wide, a steamboat came up the river and landed on the shores of Assamwamset for people to have a picnic. Um, sometime before the turn of the century, a dam was built to hold back that water because they needed the drinking water for New Bedford and Taunton. So the dam was built. When that dam was built, 
the river slowly closed in um, over the years with invasive weeds. Um, I think the Indians even grew wild rice which grew into the river and it got smaller and smaller. There's no way in this age you would bring a, a steamboat up this river. And there is a structure of the dam and a whole about a quarter of a mile of an earthen berm that's also part of the dam and it holds back the water. And with that has come um, problems with water levels because the dam holds back the water and these days we have a 500 year storm uh, every five years instead of every 500 years. We've had a lot of water so it's hard for people to, or the cities of Taunton and New Bedford to control how much water is held back because only so much can come through this earthenware dam. And when we have a drought, they'll put boards in the dam that will hold the water back because when we have a drought, you really need to hold the water back. But when you have a, a lot of torrential downpours as we've had lately, you need to let more water out. And over the years, um, people have built houses downstream. So you have to also be very careful of how much water you let out because if you want to do relief to the people upstream, you can't cause trouble to the people downstream. So it's, it's a balancing act. I would think the problem with the invasive weeds probably started out after 1953 when the dike was built all the way from Lakeside in Middleborough out to the head of the river. And, and so that flooded this pond, Assawamsit Pond and Long Pond. And I think much of that invasive stuff came from Long Pond into the river and then then it found its found its way all you know of course it, water just carried it right on down these weeds have grown in over the last hundred years this dam's been here approximately a hundred years maybe a little more or less i'm not sure about the exact date but over those hundred years of holding back the water and not so much water flowing through, if you have the water is still, then the weeds can grow. If this was a rushing river, then they wouldn't probably have that much time to grow. But as you hold the water back, the weeds over the last hundred years, it wasn't something that happened overnight. It took a hundred years and now we're trying to find a solution. So it's like it's not going to be solved overnight either. If it took a hundred years to go in, we have to be very careful how you turn that around. The hurdles to um, preserving and protecting the Damascus River is the amount of different groups that all have a say in what goes on for the river. So you have you have Mass DEP, you have Mass Fish, Fish and Wildlife, you have Mass Fisheries uh, because the the Namaskat is a, a wild and scenic protected, federally protected river for not only the herring but for the striped bass as well that swim up from the um, from the ocean into the the fresh water. Uh, so you have the town of Lakeville, you have the town of Middlebury, you have the city of Taunton and the city of New Bedford who have water rights to the, the feeder system of the Aswamsit and Long Pond complex. So it's kind of like to coordinate a meeting and to get everybody in the same room at the same time, even that's a hurdle. But then to get everybody on the same page and get everybody working together and pulling in the same direction is, uh, is probably the biggest hurdle to, to getting everything that we need done, done on the river. Um, it takes a ton of coordination. Hats off to the Lakeville Middleborough Herring Fisheries Commission because they are uniquely uh, qualified and adept at doing exactly that. 
Um, the interesting thing about that commission, and they'll tell you this as well, is they're only concerned with, with the herring and the fish, fish passage. But that translates into all the other aspects of it, from the, from the encroachment of the uh, development, to the weeds, to the outlet, to the, the water quality. So all those things fall under their umbrella, which at first glance seems to be a small umbrella and then uh, expands exponentially as, as you move forward with it. The Namaska River is its a sad story that over the last hundred years nothing has been done to curtail what's happened to it. It's been a slow process. A lot of times you don't notice as something happens slowly over the years. So I find it sad that it's come to this point where it's such a problem. Um, but on the other hand, I feel very confident that going forward there are enough people involved in all the cities and towns that this water affects that will come together and hopefully the problem can be working towards a continuing solution. The Lakeville Middleborough Herring Commission just got a grant to do a test run on the Eco Harvester. That Eco Harvester is on a barge and that will come into the river and on certain parcels of the river will be harvesting the weed growth and seeing, we're gonna try that and see if that can actually help kind of expand the channel and give the, the river a, a fighting chance, if you will. They've been working on this for many years and it's finally coming to fruition that they have the funding to do a little bit of the clearing, um, at least so that they could get a channel that the herring could get out. Um, and hopefully over the years it will continue and it's uh, taken a hundred years for this problem to come along so it's going to be a yearly challenge to do a little bit each year to try to restore the river back to being a clear flight, <laughs> I would say, for the heron to get downstream. In general, I, I feel that the Namaska River is now and always has been the lifeblood of this area. Um, thousands of years ago, the, the, the Indians used it to navigate their way through the ponds. And as it flows through Lakeville and Middleborough, it's hard not to drive over the bridges that cross the Namaska. I've tried my very best to make, make as many folks as I know aware of the situations. But I, I, I don't know until you take them by hand to a site, I don't think many of them understand or believe what you're, what you're saying, you know. It's too bad. I don't know who said it, but I honestly believe that if, if you love a, a place or a, or a thing, you have an obligation to protect it. And that, that is really what, what drives me in my pursuit to uh, keep the Namaska clean, keep it running, and keep it protected so that generations to follow can have the same type of experience that I've had.